Spencer. I am a proud gay Latino living here in Chicago. Great. So my coming out story is goes back to the way that I was raised. I was raised in a Pentecostal, uh, born again Christian home. Um, I would spend most of my summers at a church summer camp. And when I was 11 years old, I came out to a group of my friends um, at one of those summer camps and was basically ostracized. When I started to really come out and embrace my identity came in high school when I found a group of, of young people like myself who were starting a gay straight alliance. Um, and so I really identified with that not really fully knowing that what it meant to organize or to be an activist within this community, but um, I, I felt like I had found my, fam my second family. And so that for me is really the beginning point of not only my own self acceptance and discovery, um, but also my own uh, passion for uh, being involved in my community. Being, I always associated okay. God or whatever that looked like um, for us at the time as being a very compassionate, loving uh, entity. Um, I, I knew in my heart that the, it was really individuals and people who were changing the message of love and compassion. And so I've always felt that I had um, permission to be myself from that higher being, that I didn't need permission from other people. Um, and that, honestly, the, probably the breaking point for me as a young person in high school was um, going to church one evening and having the, uh, the pastor's wife come up to me at the end and say, uh, for no reason, out of nowhere, just simply said, you know, um, you'll never be anything without God. And to me, that really, it seemed like it was really tra dramatic and hurtful. But at the time, I kind of laughed it off thinking, what you don't know is that I am in the service of God. And I do believe that all of the work that I s subsequently did after that was really in response to that broken message that I received that I intended to fix. There was a, a youth leadership summit that I attended as a young person. Um, or I was introduced to an organization called ALMA, the Association of Latinos Motivating Action, who really, um, at 21, took an idea that I had with a friend of mine to uh, create a scholarship for other LGBT youth like ourselves, and um, really empowered us to um, take control and to take action and to fundraise and to develop that program on our own. And it was the programs like that and the youth leadership that really uh, encouraged me uh, to continue to see myself as someone who could fix that broken message that I had originally received. Uh, being an organizer has really meant that I've had to um, be a better ally to other issues, not just LGBT issues. That if it was in a, some, uh, talking about immigration, whether I was undocumented or not, that that was an issue that was important to someone. All along the way, I've learned to listen to other people's um, identities. I didn't want to become that linear, uh, single-issue LGBT person who only cared about, say, for example, same-sex marriage or their own privileges that they were trying to get. For me, uh, coming out and um, being discriminated against um, really showed me that other people experience discrimination for other reasons and I wanted to kind of explore those reasons um, and be part of change in general as a whole. My advice would be that there is so much to do and that everybody needs to be included, that we need everybody. Uh, we need all types of talent um, in order for social change to happen. Whatever it is that you're doing, you're part of our movement and we need you.